Or are you guys excited? A little less formal show. Are you excited? Uh, well, it's less formal that I dressed up. That's right. And why is that? Because you had a meeting, Ian Patrick Mendez, with your new movie cast and crew. I forgot to talk about this last week. Forgive me. You're in a big movie coming up. Tell us about it, please. Yeah, well, there's, there's not much I can say at the moment, but um, it's a horror film. You know, it's about to start production. It's in pre-production right now. And it's called The Good Things Devils Do, written and directed by Jess Novasgard and produced by Jane Suttles. Outstanding. And, and uh, can you mention your uh, castmates, yeah, famous um, castmates? Yeah, Leanne Quigley, I think, believe is how you say her name. She was famous for being in Return of the Living Dead and Night of the Demons, among many other uh, horror films. And Kane Hoder who is uh, famous for being Jason Voorhees in Friday the 13th. In which one? Uh, I believe it was like two, three, four. I think it was also an eight, like one of those. Yeah. But that's cool. Yeah, I heard he was a great guy, too. How about yeah. that? Outstanding. Oh, round of applause, everybody. Yay! Awesome. Thank you very much. And when do, when do we get to see this? Uh, I'm not sure when it will be released. But uh, it will pro- most likely be released this year. Well, uh, let us know. Tell us, are we invited to the premiere? Something <laughs> to look for on next year's worst of list. Huh? Oh, <laughs> no, it's gonna burn no. right there. Man. Look, I can't, I can't say anything. I can't say much, but I've read the script, and the script's fantastic. No, I was just kidding. Uh, that was a the, cheap, cheap joke. Sorry. Now it's the balls of jealousy, right, Jason? Oh, no, congratulations, sir. That's awesome. Thank you. Much, Thank um, you very much, much success. Godspeed with that film, buddy. Hey, everybody on Facebook Camera Live, you're watching the Shine Box. Thank you so much. Um, guys, it's going to be a less formal show. We're just going to jump in and talk trash. You know, some movies we hated or were disappointed by, you know? Uh, yeah, name some titles. Anybody, anything off the bat, fellas? I'll go for Blockers. <laughs> okay, you actually saw that. That's a shocker. Right, shocker. I, wa- I walked out on it, I think. Uh, uh, or, no, I saw it on HBO, so that doesn't count. I had a walkout, too. <laughs> More about that later. Tell it's, us about Blockers. Us, so you left your house because the movie was so <laughs> bad? <laughs> I've done that before. It's about uh, parents or trying to prevent their um, kids from losing their virginity. And it's like a series of gross... Very Shakespearean. <laughs> a series of gross adult actions, and it just wasn't funny at all. I could tell by the trailer. Some show Jason and I were doing, some uh, I forgot what topic last year, but I had just seen the uh, trailer for that, when the, and because we, we were doing the trailer live section of the I radio show, and I made, him, I made him watch that trailer. Isn't that right, Jason? He did. He, uh, he he made me suffer through the trailer. But the funny thing is, from what I hear, there are some funny parts to it, so I don't know. Yeah, John Cena is no uh, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, true? That's a good assessment. <laughs> yeah, this looked terrible. Uh, thoughts on Blockers, Ian? Um, I, well, I haven't seen it, but just the premise, it sounds like helicopter parents gone berserk. <laughs> You know, it's like a total authoritarians trying to surveil their children. It sounds like an, you know, NHS movie. Or something. You know, hardcore NSA. Uh, rated R com- NHS is British, I think. Right, and uh, hardcore comedies seem to have a tough time finding an audience this year, especially with the new ultimate PC culture we have in media. Like, um, it would, like if The Hangover came out to this year, it probably would have flopped, right? You, yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's not a funny time out there. <laughs> no, well, that is true. Although, inter- funny, you know, laughter could. Uh, Help us escape reality, right, fellas? Oh, it certainly can. But, I mean, you know, people have to realize that, you know, in order to be funny, it's, or, or uh, you know, ideally, in order to be funny, you have to break taboos. And in order exactly. to break taboos, you, you have to push boundaries and be offensive. And, and I guess people just aren't into that, or maybe they've forgotten it, or they think it's, you know, inappropriate to the time. Out, I, I, personally, I personally think it's needed all the time. Outstanding point. I'm I'm the only speaking of comedy. I'm the only person on the planet. True story. Uh, I'm the only person on the planet that had a good time with Holmes and Watson. I am not ashamed to admit it. That, I liked it. The movie pushed no boundaries. <laughs> <laughs> it would broke no taboos except not being funny. <laughs> Blaine, you were about to say something. No, I would think uh, another film I missed. That uh, these are all on, on my uh, list of worst films because I didn't even want to see them. But I'm surprised you didn't see uh, Sherlock Gnomes. You know, same thing, uh, Sherlock Holmes thing. It was a. Uh, it's not my bag, baby. It didn't have it. Didn't. It's missing that je ne sais quoi. <laughs> well, I missed it too. So it didn't look very good. No, I didn't. Cool. See, I didn't see it either. I didn't see the first one. It was a sequel, apparently. Yeah, it was. Um, I think I have a name. Uh, Nomeo and Juliet. Yeah. So many bad uh, computer animated films. I mean, even even Disney's re- releasing a lot of mediocre ones. Does anybody miss two D animation, hand drawn animation? Don't you miss that? 
Uh, well, there's there's still 2D animation, cell animation out there now. Well, like anime, yeah, but well, there's recent anime. blockbuster like uh, that was hand drawn, like Beauty and the Beast mm-hmm. or you know a Little Mermaid, something like that. Well, anyone? I'm, anyone? I'm gonna be honest with you, I didn't like those then. <laughs> really? <laughs> I don't like them now. But I mean, but I you can't. Know. But here's the thing about it. It's like there's there's such a craft to cell animation. There's such a craft. Uh, there's there's definite craft and artistry to claymation, uh, oh, stop motion. But there is also to computer animation. I mean, it's painstaking what these what these artists have to do in order oh, to, in order to yeah. create that. And so it is. No it's, offense it's to just, them. Yeah. yeah, I mean, well, I mean, that's the thing. It's like you know, um, like it or hate it. It's I mean, it's it's a genuine mm-hmm. genuine art form. What what about this new uh, Spider Man? Is it like into the Spider Verse? All, all, all computer verse in- uh, com- computer animation, or is it uh, is it like half and half? I don't know. I've heard it's, I I've seen heard it's had many. Uh, I heard it has many styles, and uh, apparently, it's like the bee's knees. It's like I was not going to go see it because I'm like, oh, another Spider-Man movie. Okay. But apparently it's like one of the best of the year. Critics love it. Um, so yeah, I'm going to check it out now. Yeah, yeah. The problem with animated films also is you'll be seeing coming attractions and there'll be like eight coming attractions for the films and four of them are animated and they all look the same. You know, I said, I, I can't mm-hmm. believe that, mm-hmm. you know, I have to sit through just the coming attractions are painful. Yeah. Right. Well, and they're almost obsolete because of uh, Apple trailers and YouTube. You can see all the trailers on your phone before you even get to the theater. I know, and that kills trailers for me. I mean, half the fun of going to a cinema is like the, you know, what's the new trailer? What's new? What's coming out? And I ruin it for myself when I watch it online because I'm like, oh, well, I've already seen that online. So that's nitpicking. Uh, moving on. Well, Sorry. no, it was the same problem with blockers, too, that you saw also the coming attractions and there weren't very many good parts in it, but mm-hmm. all of them were in the coming attractions. Yeah. And it was a waste to see the film, which yeah. is a real, I guess it's an art to make a coming attraction. Oh, yeah, most definitely. That makes people want to see it, but not ruin it for them. Exactly. Well, w- which is interesting because Holmes and Watson, all the funny bits were in the trailer. Right. The only funny mm-hmm. bits were in the trailer. And I was yeah. really I, I'm sorry, the ghost reference was not in the trailer. Billy Zane wait, wait. was not in the trailer. Now I don't have to see it. You ruined it. Sorry, it's not the Holmes and Watson show. Moving on, moving on. <laughs> Who else wants to talk about some bad movies? Jason Before Williams. Jason. Okay, I, I want to talk about it. not exactly a bad movie, but it was very disappointing from its source material, and that would be Ready Player One. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it's just, it's just, it, it seemed it's like it's a trapper keeper full of nostalgia. Exactly, they just, they, they just like vomited the eighties nostalgia all over, over the movie. It was all c- computer animation. It was just like. Wow. Only thing I loved about it was the, the Shining, uh, the whole scene in oh, The Shining. Yeah. <laughs> I love that segment. That was a great segment. Outside of that, it was, hey, remember this? Yeah. Remember this? Remember this? But remember the, this? But the, the book is, is so much fun and such like a page turner. You just want to like c- c- keep on with it. Uh, interesting. Right? I've heard mixed reviews about the book. I've heard uh, well, the book is also um, spoon-feeding I, I, nostalgia. I en- enjoyed the book. But I guess oh. it was, less, I mean, yes, there was a lot of nostalgia in the book, but it wasn't like force-fed <laughs> to you. Like, what? Like in, in, in Ready Player One. You said it was a disappointment. So were you uh, like super excited for that one? I, I was a little excited to, yeah. to see it. Yeah. Well, Generation X. So yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Why not? It, it looked like fun. Another Steven Spielberg movie. So, but I think he just got kind of minored in all of the, of course, the nostalgia and the right. CGI. He's, he probably did it in his sleep while he worked, focuses on yeah. a stronger project or something more close to home. Fellas, thoughts on uh, Ready Player One or, or nostalgia trips? Um, I haven't seen it. Did I you have? Know. Did you have interest? I well, I mean, fa- you know, passing interest. Uh, I really like Steven Spielberg and I like the book, but I, I just wasn't, I just wasn't interested in seeing the movie. Mm-hmm. And yeah. Blaine, you were probably a, a breakdancing kid with the uh, neon <laughs> shoelaces back in the day, so you were probably excited for that one, right? Still am. There you go. Excellent. <laughs> All right. I, uh, let me throw out Please. Uh, two two documentaries. One we didn't see, la- we didn't mention last week, but I was disappointed. Was the Michael Moore um, film again? The name's escaping me. Uh, uh, that's Fahrenheit Eleven Nine. Did you see it? Uh, no, I didn't see yeah. it. And uh, it, it. Go ahead. I yeah. love everything Michael Moore has done, but this I didn't. It was first of all a rehash of some other stuff. Yes, he's it done. looked more the same, the, the, and it's just going to make me so angry. I would just rather out and. Go go to a museum or go to you know, make a painting or something. I would, I, I know I was gonna be so angry when I watched it, um, and now I'm familiar with more familiar with his like cinematic tricks and editing tricks. So mm-hmm. yeah, I skipped it. Yeah, talking about getting angry, I chose not to see this one, but it was a Death of a Nation. You know, and oh. I, 
Yeah. But, but I, I was wondering, like, how angry would I get if I saw it, you know? And, and <laughs> I didn't see his other documentary. Let's don't, let's don't give any, any airtime to that horrible <laughs> man who made that movie. Well, we just don't talk about we that We won't one. mention the name then. Okay. I can't mention his name. Uh, if you if you wish, if you wish, as you wish, it's Ian's First Amendment right to to, to mention his name. <laughs> it sure is. Uh, I mean, you know, I like I, I'm not going to touch it because we could go down that uh, rabbit hole. It's like you know, I I don't like Michael Moore very much, and I don't like Dinesh D'Souza very much either. So there you go. It's a fair cop. Uh, Ian, how about something you want to talk talk about? What you got? Well, I want to I want to go back to talking about what we were talking about before we went on air with Fifty Shades Freed, <laughs> um, because you know I I've seen seen all of the 50 shades movies <laughs> right and i wouldn't necessarily put it like any of them in my worst of list because one it's low hanging fruit and two <laughs> they like they they are so much fun that the like no matter how bad they are they're worth watching but 50 shades free freed had the the unconscionable it, it was unconscionable how mediocre it was it was not sufficiently bad to warrant laughter. Wasn't even w- worth like a riff track or anything. <laughs> no, no, no. The first two definitely. And this one it was like I was like, ah, there's just, you know, there's nothing here, you know? It was so bougie. More of a vanilla uh, uh S&M. <laughs> yeah, I don't even recall any really like, you know, like <laughs> a- any S&M period, let alone <laughs> vanilla s and I'm sure there was some, but it's like the movie has passed out of my mind. Whereas 1 and 2 have really stuck with me. How I exciting. <laughs> one thing I can't wait to talk about later is the co-star uh, the female star of that movie, of uh, that Dakota series, Dakota Johnson, was in a movie I loved this summer. We're going to talk about that later. I can't wait to fight about that. She was one of the assassins in Hotel Artemis, but we're going to talk about that Dakota in just a moment. J- no, Dakota Johnson was. Yeah, she was. She was in. She no, was, was in, 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 ho- in Bad Times at the El Royale. Oh, I'm, see, I'm mixing up my hotel movies. Silly yeah, yeah, yeah. me. We'll get to get that your later. Your hotel straight. <laughs> yeah, Bad Times at the El Royale. They were both great. Good. I got them confused. They were so good. Uh, uh, <clears throat> <clears throat> well, let me uh, throw out a subject. I'm, I'm going to fly through these because uh, there's no need to talk about it, unless you want to, of course. This category is called I'm Not Drinking That Kool-Aid. That means I never had an interest, interest in it, and the, the bad reviews did not surprise me. We got Robin Hood, this year's uh, <clears throat> King Arthur, yes. Uh, searching or King, any... King Arthur is great. <laughs> searching or any computer movie. We go to the cinema to escape reality. Do we go to look at a computer screen? I don't think so. Uh, Death Wish or Peppermint, take either one, whatever. Um, feel free to jump in on any of these I, guys. I, I haven't seen Death Wish, but um, I, I'm a, I, oddly, I am an Eli Roth defender. <laughs> uh, but on the basis, not of his torture porn movies, but of Knock Knock, which he made with Keanu Reeves, which I thought was so much fun. Cool. <laughs> Did you see his uh, kid movie, the, uh, clock with the, ho- the House with the Clock no, in the Store? No, I, I haven't seen either of his movies this year. I'll get to it cool. eventually. Right but, uh, I haven't seen Peppermint, but just the, the premise just sounds extremely it's fe- yeah, it's ex- extremely w- wrong. Uh, yeah, the, the, the fact that she... Uh, w- so this, these, these Mexican gangsters c- kidnap her, 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 her like family and, like, and like, kill them, and so she takes her revenge, like shoots up all, all, all these Mexicans. It just doesn't seem... I'm yeah, sure, it, I'm sure it, it, it would fly with a certain segment of the population, but it just seems like, do you have to do that right now? <laughs> yeah, well, it's do, a good do Mexicans point. have to be the the, the, a, the, the enemy? That's right a great now? point. I mean, the politics, <laughs> I politics... I didn't even know that was the premise. By itself, I didn't really care about it. They're just bad. They just looked awful. And it's like, uh, yeah, I guess you can say the first Death Wish was a good movie. I haven't seen it in so long. The others are garbage. Just no interest. It's like... Again, more of the same. I'm not even worried about the politics in it. I'm not, well, not, not that I would agree with the politics in it. Well, Go ahead, Blake. something else. You know, you said the first Death Wish. And again, I haven't seen it since 1970s or whenever it was. But it was caught me off guard. It was good. And then they had a Death Wish 2, a Death Wish 3, you know. And, and in general, I'm not a big fan of any sequel movie. You know, once you have the first one. Now, you know, if Bruce Willis put on a mustache and did a Charles Bronson impression <laughs> during the movie, I would have gone to see that. You're like, hey, buddy. <laughs> Yippee ki yay, melon farmer. Me, did you say melon farmer? Melon farmer, yeah. Yippee ki yay, melon farmer. Yeah, you know, if he if he did uh, Charles Bronson, that'd be awesome. Anyway, moving on, just down the silly list, the movies I avoided from the beginning. Gotti, 317 to Paris. Thank you, uh, gentlemen. You are heroes. Thank you for what you did. Of course, that's amazing, uh, but you can't act. Please don't put non-actors in uh, movies. Pacific Rim 2, Nutcracker in the Four Realms. And Billionaire Boys Club with Kevin Spacey. Any of those on your list? <laughs> Movies you knew would stink from the beginning? I, I don't. Yeah. Well, I have 
I have a couple, but I was going to say, I kind of wanted to see P- Pacific Rim just because I like the first one a whole lot. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, see, like, kind of how, 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 how bad this one was, but I think I, I missed it when it was at uh, the pizza company. Well, uh, a couple of them on, on, on my list that I just didn't want to see. Uh, Tomb Raider, even though um, <laughs> uh, 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 so uh, bad, I forgot uh, about it. Thank Alicia Vikander, v- 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 or, or, or whatever her, her name is, is that's is, right, Vikander. Yeah, uh, skyscraper was another one. <laughs> it's just like uh, the, uh, the 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 rock. It's Die Hard with the rock. Yeah, in a, in a, uh, in the, the, a skyscraper. I love the rock. And uh, oh, he's awesome. The Meg. I was just like, <laughs> I, I, I hear actually, it, it's it's kind of campy and it's actually. Yeah, and apparently fun, just, it was it, a huge hit. People liked that. It doesn't. It, it didn't look very appealing to me. See, see, I think the cardinal sin in cinema is not being bad, because I mean, as we see with the Room or Plan Nine from Outer Space or a million other movies, being so bad that you're the worst can be completely. Re- you you can redeem yourself. the The cardinal sin is mediocrity. True. Which is why which is why Fifty Shades Freed was so disappointing. <laughs> Blaine, you got another good one for us, buddy. I have another one. I don't think we mentioned it. Tagged. Uh, which had looked great in the coming attractions, I thought. And it's based on a true story. The, mm-hmm. the guys who run around tag each other, and they do it uh, for all their lives. But the uh, movie itself did nothing for me, and uh, it just wasn't funny. It wasn't good at all, and um, I don't know why. Interesting uh, premise, comedy about adults, adult <laughs> middle-aged men playing uh, tag. Yeah, it kind of seemed kind of fun, but I just you know I didn't get a chance to see it. What was that movie's back in the eighties? It, it, it was it, it was like tag. They, they, were, they were playing like they were shooting right. each each other with uh, like uh, plastic dart. Guns, I'm going blank. It, it got real. I don't know. This is way back in the 80s. Uh-huh. Did you dream, did you dream about this? I thought this? it was also called Tag, but I'm not sure. I think you dreamed this, Jason. Yeah. <laughs> was it a segment in The Wizard with uh, Fred Savage? Ooh, that no, was it was it, like when I was a kid, it was it was like one of my favorite like HBO movies. Uh, like, oh, that that Tag movie's coming on. I'm going to go see it. <laughs> oh, oh, I think that was on a double bill with BMX with, Bandits. Uh, along with like <laughs> Cloak and Dagger and... Uh, with Nicole Kidman. Oh, with BMX Bandits, y'all. Uh, well, I mean, the only thing that's coming to my mind is like the, the string of really bad Corey Haim, Corey Feldman movies that were in the early 90s. Like it was like one was like Roller Boys or something like that, where he Prayer enjoyed, of the he, Roller Boys. Yeah, Prayer of the Roller Boys. Why is that in my head? <laughs> Why? Yeah, the one where he's on rollerblades with a gang and they're doing drugs or whatever. <laughs> so bad. It's amazing. Oh, see, that's. That's what I mean by, like, you know, you can be so bad, you're the worst, and be redeemable. Well, oh, Jason, you mentioned uh, Rift Tracks earlier. Love them. So much fun. I just happened oh, yeah. to see on a night, uh, on a cold night, had nothing to do. I watched, uh, gosh, it was the amazing Bruce Campbell. Always amazing in any movie. Oh, yeah. uh, I think, gosh, I'm going blank. I think it was called Avalanche or something. It was a bunch of terrorists on a ski resort takeover. It's Die Hard on a ski resort, and Bruce Campbell is like the Hans Gruber and Sean Sean Austin from uh, Goonies is like the Bruce Willis type. It was hysterical. That's a, that sounds amazing. Yeah, it was on Rift Tracks. Amazing. So much fun. Yeah, well, and let me throw one in. Uh, this year, um, the movie that, one, was uh, most disappointing to me, and two, I thought was just, was just not very good, uh, and from a director that I really like, was The Predator. Oh, yeah, I want to talk about this, because I yeah. was actually excited, even though... It was like, all right, more 80s stuff we're going back to. But I had hope with uh, Shane yeah, Black. Yeah, and Shane then, Black is great, man. I love Shane Black. Yeah, talk, let's talk about that. Well, is, you, did you get to see it? Did anyone get to see it? No. I saw most of it online and through clips and all. Yeah, it's – I don't know what happened. If it was studio, studio interference or whatever. It was just – it was a poorly timed um, uh, movie. The jokes were awful. Uh, I don't know who edited this thing. It was, And uh, the, the concepts and the story were, were pretty – I mean, just mediocre, and uh, they were always going for the um, for the low hanging fruit references. Like, for instance, you know, in the original Schwarzenegger says "Get to the chopper," and in this one, they see a bunch of Harleys, and somebody says "Get to the choppers," which, <laughs> it, which, it, which, which could be great if the movie were bad enough for it, <laughs> right? But everything around it was so mediocre. I just, I couldn't, I could not hang with it, you know. There was something crazy backstage. There was apparently uh, one of his crew, one of Shane Black's crew, was arrested on sexual assault charges or something. Is that true? Um, I saw something passing, you know, like I saw a passing like headline or something about it. Uh, but I didn't really, I didn't really pay attention to the story. I don't really know what's. No, going I didn't either. I just remember there was some 
some there, hubbub going on there. There was some, and there. I think uh, the actress that, that had to act with him uh, got was angry about it, and so they cut the scene out of the film. Uh, apart from that, I don't really know much. Yeah, I had uh, trepidations on this one because I was excited for the Adrian Brody Predators, Robert Rodriguez. Oh, I like that. And I was like, okay, it's the same movie on a different planet. Great. Yeah, All but, right. but, well, th- but that's the thing. It's like it was still an entertaining movie. It was True. still an entertaining movie. And Lawrence, Pre- uh, sorry, Lawrence Fishburne was amazing in it. Oh, it's so, and I, I loved everybody in it. And um, Predator 2 is so trashy. <laughs> it's so trashy. Yeah, it's cool. Uh, it, that it, it, for me, it's a, it's a movie that I, that I love because of how trashy it is and, uh, and how different it is and what it tries to do rather than what it actually is. It's definitely not a mediocre movie. <laughs> And of course, the original. I think you know anyone who's seen it. You oh, but one of Arnie's best. Oh yeah, action it's, it's movies. such a such a tight John McTiernan, it's such yeah. a tight uh, action movie. And this one, um, I don't know what they were thinking, honestly. Well, con- uh, continuing with the franchise, what are you, what's your thoughts on the AVP movies? Oh, the AVP, uh, like Alien versus Predator, is good, trashy fun. AVP two is um, it's just not worth watching. <laughs> right on, fellas. Thoughts on the Predator? Come here, kill me. I'm over here. Uh, I don't know. It looked kind of s- stupid from the beginning. <laughs> I would have been interested to to, to see it at, at, at like a ch- cheap theater, but yeah. I, I didn't get a chance. What was that? There was there was like a there were like uh, it was like the regular pr- predator. He wanted to like defect or something, and then it, it was like a super pr- predator that was yeah. coming. Was after it, a di- him. <laughs> it was it was not. I don't know who thought this up, but it was not well put together. Was it a direct <laughs> sequel to the original story, or just? The name. Unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, it was. <laughs> you know, the the they they give you a um, uh, a a reason for why the predators are coming to Earth and stealing people's spinal cords, which which you know the original. Well, they're hunters. They're, they're, they're yeah, just hunters. Yeah, that was what they're trophies. That's, that's what it was in the first and the he... second and and the rest. And they changed it in this movie to something that does not make sense at all. <laughs> See remakes <laughs> trying to. Explain everything. Now, I don't want to uh, upset you or go back down this dark road, but this is why I think uh, Prometheus and Covenant left us disappointed because they're explaining a monster on a, on a spaceship movie. That's all it was. Well, yeah, you're not going to upset me, man. I, I like you. You, take, you can take issue with any movie right. I like. I don't mind. Uh, I pref- I like I would never say that those movies are without flaws, but I really really I really really love them on many, on so many levels. I think. But you see the I see the argument. I, there, I see your, yeah. Oh, I totally see your argument, and I think for me in Prometheus and Alien Covenant, it's well done, and I think it's really cool, and it's like a Frankenstein story mm-hmm. in many ways. Um, but in in uh, this the Predator film, it's just it's just not it's not a good movie, and it's not bad enough to be enjoyable. You know? Wow, um, a swing and a miss from Shane Black. Yeah. Who's next? Who wants to go? Blaine, your turn. I'll go for one. it. I think, and you, you, I think liked it, but I didn't. Ocean's Eight. And I again, wanted to see it. It looks oh, fun. I, I mean, Kate Blanchett. I'll see her in anything. I would have thought, and all, but it's like um, I liked it was Ocean Eight was the original, right? Then it was Ocean's Eleven. It was uh, Frank Sinatra, Ocean's right. Eleven, Ocean's and George o- and his friends remade it as uh, Ocean Eleven. Ocean's Twelve and Ocean's right. Thirteen. Yeah. And so the original was great. The um, the remake was pretty good, but this I got tired of it. You know, mm-hmm. so it's a caper, but it's women, and again, another film I'll sometimes walk out on. And that one, I think I was in the theater and I walked out on. It's just not funny, it's just not interesting. And again, once you've seen the premise, let, let them do something different mm-hmm. rather than another caper film similar to the others. Yeah, that's why uh, last week just praising Widows so much because this is the movie that Ocean's Eight should have been. You know, instead of oh, we got to still. You know, a pearl necklace, you know. It's like, what? <laughs> um, but not to uh, add any oil to your uh, water there, but uh, now no one loves the Rat Pack more than me. But have you ever seen the original Ocean's Eleven? It's bad. It is just Frankie and his buddies hanging out, doing stuff. I they, mean, it's really bad. But those guys hanging out and just doing stuff is more enjoyable than most people hanging out and just doing Amen, stuff. Amen, brother. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Jason, what do you want to talk about next, buddy? Uh, well, let's talk about a really truly horrible m- movie and that is Venom oh, like, probably nice. one of the worst uh, comic book thank movies thank you to <laughs> Thomas Hardy for being in that because uh, yeah. you uh, made a horrible horrible movie a yeah. fun time yeah exactly if it wasn't for t- uh, t- Tom Hardy it, this movie would have just been un- unwatchable uh, I mean it's uh, parts of it it made no sense the action mm-hmm. you, you couldn't tell sometimes what was going on and it 
it seemed to like w w want to get to its. I mean, it took a whole a whole lot of time, like getting to the getting getting the backstory, getting the symbiote in there. Then it like rushed right to the to, to the end, the the, the 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 fight between the two. Uh, the space goo fight yeah, versus yeah. black versus gray. It was just yeah. And spoilers ridiculous. here, I must say, I just saw this the, when the third act started. You know, you see the bad guy and the goo, and the good guy with the goo fight each other, and the bad guy is trying to go to the shuttle, the space shuttle, and launch it so he can take off and get more goo. <laughs> it's like Venom, stop fighting him. Just go to the shuttle and destroy it, and he won't be able to fly off the darn planet. <laughs> and uh, another just ridiculous is is when uh, the. The symbiote got attached to uh, Michelle Williams. Yeah, Michelle Williams. <laughs> it's just stupid. <laughs> because reasons. Two questions for Jason. So you actually saw this movie? Uh, yeah, I, I saw it at the pizza company. I didn't. I didn't pay. Jason is fun. He is fun to watch bad movies with. You got to get his commentary. He's also, awesome. I was just curious. Like, do you ever see a, a bad movie and then walk out on it, or will you see the whole thing? I usually, honestly, I usually don't walk out on, on movies. I usually stick it out to the end, no matter like how just how bad it is, or if I fall asleep or, or whatever. Usually, I'll just sit there to the end, so I can say. Does it ever get better? Uh, no, it it doesn't. <laughs> I, I, I agree. Sometimes you can you can get good jokes as out a, of it. As a film fan, you got to stay in there. You got to hang in there. I've got about uh, I had six walkouts. Now I have seven. I'll talk about it in just a moment. Uh, I only uh, have, but I'll try and stay in there. I only have one walkout. Oh please, what is that? Holmes and Watson. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I didn't walk out because uh, you know, like I was just this is terrible. I want my money back. I was just like you know, I was sitting there in the theater. I was not laughing. And I thought to myself, you know, I'd rather go home and read. You know what? I, I can't defend it. It's horrible. It's stupid. I was in the mood. It was my Christmas morning movie. I went to have a good time. I laughed. I'm a big fan of those guys. Well, I, I had love, a good time. I love those guys, The sold-out audience with me had a great time, too. I think we were in the Twilight Zone or something because no one else did. I, th I mean, it, you know, the audience I saw it with, they were st stone-faced. <laughs> <laughs> they were stone-faced. I should have had brought the, the Everly Brothers song from, uh, from Ghost. Yeah. Oh my! How's it go? Come on, help me out. Help me out. Uh, so, sorry, I can't do the it. Ghost, uh, never mind. My darling, I hunger for anybody your got some touch. Cl <laughs> anybody got some clay? Guys, see Holmes and Watson. Think uh, I, I got, it's funny. I, got, I had I a good some, time. I Moving on. Tomatoes. <laughs> uh, I liked it. Yeah, Blaine. How about you, buddy? You said you had it. You haven't had a walkout. Uh, yeah, I have a bunch of walkouts. Oh, name one. Name. Give us one. Well, I think I mentioned a, a couple of the uh, Ocean's 8. I oh, yeah, Ocean's out. 8, right. Well, I'll, I'll revisit now on HBO. I'll see the end of it. I'm just curious. And if the movie's bad, I'll, we do the same thing you do. We'll, we'll yeah. look at each other, and Cynthia and I will have a rating system. And I'll say, what is it? And if it's five or less, and I say five or less, too, we walk out. You know, but the problem yeah. is sometimes I like a movie, and she won't. You know, and then you have a – got to sort of stay with it. I will say uh, to Chris Brunton, a great friend, Chris Brunton, and all diehard Holmes, uh, Sherlock Holmes fans, don't see it. Don't see it if you're a diehard Holmes fan. Don't see it for that. Okay. I mean, hey. I mean, I would say just don't see it because it's it's objectively not funny. <laughs> it had six laughs. It passed a six laugh test. Yes, uh, it did. Uh, objectively, it's not funny. <laughs> it passed a six laugh test. We can go on and on. Less filling tastes great. Hey, you know what else is great? The Grail Movie House. The Shine Box is underwritten by Grail Movie House. This weekend they have Vice and the Return of the Wife with Glenn Close and Jonathan Price. I'm glad that's coming back because I get to see it. And they also keep the amazing shoplifters in Roma and something called Green Book. On January 25th, they have Stan and Ollie. More information at GrailMovieHouse.com. Close and Price. Hey, Sounds like an 80s buddy cop movie, don't you think? When you got the price, they get you close. Premieres after the Super Bowl. I get the feeling that you didn't like uh, Green Book a whole lot. It was a disappointment. I can't say it's that bad, but it was disappointing. It was just two great performances, and everything else was stock cliche. Like Crash, it was two hours of racism is bad. It's like, yes, we know. It's, and everything, everybody else was a cliche character except the main stars, who were amazing. A film we didn't talk about last week was uh, The Wife. You know, and... Um, yeah, you and Meg reviewed it on the show. I can't wait to see oh, it. I thought you had seen it. Did no, you, we you guys you, see it. I'll yeah. see it this weekend. Thank yeah. you, Grail. Yeah, enjoyed it. It's worth seeing, and it's um, just an interesting twist on a story. Very, very well done. I enjoyed it. Well, after the uh, st uh, station ID, there I have a great category here. I love this. We have some fun with this. It's urinating on monuments, turning classics into <laughs> garbage. 
category. Th <laughs> this category has a wrinkle in time, outstanding book turned to PC motivational posters in 3D. Hated that movie. Also, I was super excited to see it. The trailer grabbed me when, I, when it first came out. Like, I could not wait to see it. Also, we got The Grinch, Universal, uh, upsetting Dr. Seuss. Again, I walked. that was a walkout, too. I walked out on the Ron Howard Grinch. I hated it. I hated it so much. Uh, did you actually see this Grinch? Oh, gosh, no. <laughs> it's, it's, the, it's the Grinch turned into another animated toy fair. Yeah. I, I'm just, I'm still like sort of spinning, you know, my in my noggin uh, over the title of this category because I'm thinking considering our <laughs> considering our socio political moment, the title hey, could be taken one please, of two sir, ways. Uh, you know? You're more than happy to reboot it. Give me a new title. Go. <laughs> I mean I don't have anything to say about it, to tell you the truth. No, it's just like this uh, you know, pissing on classics, you know, peeing on classics. Well, you know? but like peeing on like the monuments that are like the death of a nation, that probably wouldn't be a, a bad thing. <laughs> hey. Oh I'm sorry, you guys seem to be the biggest fans of The Wrinkle in Time or The Grinch. Did I uh, rub oh, a sore spot there? No, 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 you, no, 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 no. I was just talking about the title of the category, which I thought was quite funny. <laughs> no, uh, I, Wrinkle in Time is on my uh, worst of list. Oh, it's um, horrible. It's so bad. Yeah, it was, it, it, it was like a big, it felt like a big budget Hallmark film. Exactly. Thank you. you know? yeah. I, I call it the uh, motivational art posters. No, yeah, th that you see in office. Like, hang in there, buddy. All that stuff. It was that, exactly that. Okay, wrinkle Time, who was in that? It was uh, Oprah Winfrey. Oprah. Oh, I, I How dare you forget yeah. Oprah was in a movie. Yeah. It, it just, uh, and even uh, on an uh, aesthetic level, I couldn't, I couldn't admire yeah. the design. And that kid who played the youngest brother, oh, I was, I just, oh, he was so awful. <laughs> he was like, I'm acting. Look at me, casting director. Hey, I'm Travis, acting. Have a, have a stress ball. Have a stress ball. <laughs> It's horrible. Don't see it. It's so bad. And I love the book too. Growing up, I'm, I'm sure we all read it, right? Well, and that, I don't. I don't. I don't really care about the book. Tell you the truth, I know it's classic. I just, you know, it's not my thing. Hey, nothing wrong with that. You know, I mean, I'm sure there's a good adaptation to be made from that material. Um, As they say, a, a big, uh, you know, literary fans say it's unfilmable. So maybe that's true. Uh, everything is filmed. If David Cronenberg can make a brilliant movie of uh, William Burroughs' uh, <laughs> Naked, Naked Lunch. Lunch I, I think that anything is filmable. You know? Hey, his movie Eastern Promises is getting a sequel, apparently. How about yeah, that? They've been talking about that for a long time. Super cool. Yeah. Uh, one more on this, on this category, <laughs> urinating on monuments, is Jurassic World, Fallen Kingdom, absolute dreck, uh, just a shame to the original uh, 93 classic. Yeah, I have to uh, uh, agree. This, uh, this movie was nice. awful. It's, it, it's, it, it's funny because the trailer's... It made it all out to to, to be about this uh, the extinction, like the island bl blowing up and everything, and that's only like a third of the movie. Uh, the the rest of the movie is they they bring the, the dinosaurs to some home in California and try to like sell them off to to people as weapons. Dinosaur or as, weapon auction. Uh, or as pets or something. You have access to <laughs> nuclear weapons, <laughs> lasers, whatever sound sound weapons, and. Um, now it's no, no, no dinosaur, dinosaur soldiers. Yeah. I mean, I, I just have to say, I did not think Jurassic World was very good. So it I was horrible. You know, yeah. I, I did, I didn't think it was very good. It was, it was to, it was for me, it, it was exactly the same as, um, as uh, Star Wars: The Force Awakens. You know, exactly. Sure. You know? It was a hollow. It was a hollow um, uh, shell remake. A hollow shell. A hollow remake of the original film that everyone loved. Well, what Jane, Jason said was one of the reasons I missed it was because a lot of it's set inside, actually. In, inside somebody's home? Correct. Like, like most of the movie is is set in, in inside this house. I think somewhere in in, in California, like up, up in uh, up in northern California. And yeah, it's it's an auction. They auction off these dinosaurs. And of course, how many times? How many how many times is it going to be before people learn that <laughs> you just don't take dinosaurs like out of cages or or just don't get around dinosaurs because eventually they're just going to escape and they're just going to eat a lot of people. <laughs> yes, you've. Uh, Put this franchise out the pasture, just like the Terminator. At least put the Carpenters, uh, the Connors, out the pasture. And uh, and also, again, another just stupid thing, like with Jurassic World, they decide, oh, we're gonna we're gonna um, uh, genetically engineer this new form of, of dinosaur that's like a super predator d uh, dinosaur. I can shoot super like lasers out of its eye and stuff. It's like what? On what planet is that even a good idea? <laughs> well, and that, I think this is the problem with uh, corporate filmmaking, which is what we're in the middle of right now. That's why Terminator, Predator, uh, Jurassic World, like all these franchise Star Wars, all these, all these, uh, these franchises are just they're they're 
not even so bad it's good. They are strictly mediocre uh, because they, they have to be stamped with the corporate brand. You know? Yeah, we need to derail this uh, franchise remake train. Stop. Make original blockbusters again. I mean, like you say, nothing. it's the old cliche, nothing is original. That might yeah. be true. But stop well, with mean, the 80s remakes. Just well, stop, stop, I th- stop. I think, uh, well, I think that, that saying, you know, that's – didn't Plato say that? Like nothing new can be created? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, but, I mean, it's essentially true. I think, you know, we, we have a limited number of uh, stories we can tell. But, I mean, the, the, what's great is the storyteller, you know? That's what makes something great is the storyteller, their, their, their way of telling the story. So, um, Touche. Yeah. So um, the trouble is corporations are hey, not good storytellers. Tell us a bad storyteller this year. What you got, Ian? Another one for you. Bad movie, worst movie. Uh, the one that was at the top of my list, which might surprise people, uh, was uh, Red Sparrow. Yeah. I, I was like, this looks awful. So I, I avoided it. Well, it, again, it, it, it falls into that extraordinarily mediocre category. And it had... It had <laughs> It had material that could have been really great. I read a review of it before I went to see it, and the reviewer said it's like, um, it's like Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy being made by Showgirls era Paul Verhoeven. <laughs> and for me, I'm like, you know, I love Paul Verhoeven. Like Showgirls is an objectively awful movie, and I love it. It was fun though. Oh yeah, I absolutely love it. And but right before that, he made Basic Instinct, which I think is actually a brilliant movie, like a brilliant movie. So I'm I'm getting really excited, I, you know, like to to see this movie. So I finally watch it. And it is, it is so, it's so PG-13. You know, it's a movie that, that seems like it's going to be, you know, a, a very sexy movie. Like, maybe, maybe really um, uh, kind of pushing boundaries with, the, like, like Basic Instinct did. And it, uh, I don't know, the, the one, you know, uh, sort of, uh, uh, what do we say, scandalous scene is mm-hmm. done almost fully clothed. <laughs> I'm, and like, everyone I'm like, come is, on, people. Everyone is talking like this. So yeah, I must be talk- Russian. I am the Russian like in the this, movie. You know? Well, it seemed like they wanted to to, to try to make an uh, atomic blonde or, or something. So how did it? Con- that was great. No, it, did, it, w- it wasn't. It like it, it it did not have the courage to be trashy. Uh, it did not have the the chutzpah uh, to be, which is kind of the same thing. It did not have the chutzpah to be really great and to you know and take any chances. Um, it was just mediocre. It was played it too safe. They played it so safe, and it's a r- it's really a shame. I mean, but the truth is, you can't get a movie like Basic Instinct made today. You just can't. I mean, even when it was being no. made in the early '90s, there were protests. And, and that was a uh, Jennifer Lawrence, right? Yeah, if it was I'm Jennifer Lawrence. Yeah, she was in another disappointment. I believe it was from a year ago. Uh, Passengers. I was so excited about, and that ending just. I. It was kind of like Sunshine. I loved it until the end of it. I hated that movie. That because of the ending. That was with Bradley Cooper? That was with uh, Chris Pratt and Jennifer Lawrence. And that's it. They were the only oh. ones in it. Uh, Blaine, you got another one, buddy. I have another one, too. Um, uh, Life of the Party. Um, and again, Melissa McCarthy doing a traditional thing. And it's the same her old. Shtick, yeah, doing her shtick, baby. Same old, same old, it looked like. And so I, I just refuse to see it on that basis because it looked like so many other movies I've seen. And again, the coming attractions confirm that. Yeah, I had not liked her comedies at all. But the only movie I've loved, I did love from uh, from this year, we talked about it, was uh, Can You Ever Forgive Me? Outstanding movie. Her other movies are just garbage. I can't stand her. But she's the same role in every... Exactly. Yeah, it's like, oh, I'm fat. I fall down. Look at me. It's like Chris Farley did the same thing. I never thought he was that funny. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. Um, yeah, good choice, I think. Guys, did you see that? Do you... No, no. No, no I didn't. I, you know, I don't go see. I mean, I, I'll definitely see. Can you ever forgive me? But I don't really go and see the Melissa McCarthy movies. Yeah, they're just not funny. Yeah. There you go. They do not pass the six laugh test. So says T Rex. Mm. I mean, you know, I think Melissa McCarthy has. You know, there's something endearing about her. I think that's why she's so. Oh she's yeah, so famous I'm and gets so, so many. Great roles person. Out. I admire her success. Good for her. I just don't like her brand of comedy. Cool. Yeah. Jason, you want to throw out another one for us? Well, I'll throw out one. I don't. This is this is a, a personal d- disappointment. Okay. T- cool. To me, I don't think it's a, a, a bad movie, but a, as uh, as as Patrick says, it's, it falls well in, in the realm of, of mediocre, except for uh, except for the the, the, the main uh, the main performance, which is truly uh, amazing, and that is B- Bohemian uh, Rhapsody. Uh, very I mean, bad script. Yeah, very bad it, film it, with a great it's, performance. It's it's very it's 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 safe. They didn't. Yeah. It's 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 like filled with a lot of like music to, uh, b- b- biopic uh, c- cliches like uh, the the band's about to break up the blah 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 and but I mean it, for the the most part it it seemed like oh well I mean they're going pretty well and 
Yeah, I mean, if it, if it wasn't for the per- performance by R- Remy Malik, then it would it would be kind of awful. And they didn't even talk about uh, uh, m- making of of um, F- Flash Gordon's yeah. soundtrack. Uh, yeah. it was a that standard. Is, that is unconscionable. It was a paint by numbers biopic. Even when he was at the beginning talking to his dad, I was thinking of Walk Hard, the great movie Walk Hard, and I wanted him to go. I wanted the dad to go. Wrong kid, dad. I mean, it was exactly the same thing. Yeah, I'm thinking the same thing. I'm watching the film. I'm looking at my watch. It's not a good sign. Yet that last 20 minutes blew me away. The concert was as good as any concert I've ever seen. Both the music and the way it was filmed, and just it, it made it past the terrible film into kind of watchable good film. Yeah. And which is, which is, wait, I haven't seen it, but I've heard that the last 20 minutes are like the reason to watch the movie. But, and supposedly that last 20 minutes, the real concert is the greatest 20 minutes of all time in, in yeah. rock history. Yes. So I went back and saw the YouTube video and it was just fantastic. Yeah. Miss Freddie Mercury. Incredible. Yeah, but I like the movie be, you know, better. It's just yeah. great that last 20 minutes. A quick what? thoughts on that one, Ian? Well, I mean, I haven't seen it and um, and I kind of expected that it would be sort of paint by numbers yeah. uh, biopic. And, and I'll tell you, it really makes me miss the great uh, late great Ken Russell, because no one, <laughs> no one did a biopic, and especially a uh, biopic of a musician, yeah. uh, the way Ken Russell did. Ken Russell yeah. was amazing. He, Great I director. Mean, talk about people taking chances. Like he took <laughs> every chance he possibly mm-hmm. could, pushed things as far as he could, yeah. uh, like up to the point where it was absolutely ridiculous. And but um, even 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 like Oliver Stone's The Doors. I mean, th- oh, yeah. th- they could have took some some lessons from oh, Church, yeah. The Doors, nope. or, which, or which something. is which I love. It's so it's so ridiculous. Yeah. I love it. I absolutely love that movie. Yeah. yeah, I'm of two minds of Bohemian Rhapsody. I had fun, you know. I, it was like going to karaoke and just listening to that great great music. Um, on the other hand, it's a horrible script, horrible mm-hmm. cliche biopic, and I hated it. But I love the performance, and I had fun. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of like straight out, out of Compton, in, in, in the way that it it, it, it paints their their main characters a, a little too, too too holy. It doesn't get them grimy or anything. I, yeah. Of course, it's, I think it's written by the. Of course, it was written by like Brian May and some 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 uh, uh, some of the other people uh, around the band, but they just. They were they, they were too uh, afraid to get d- dirty with it, I guess. Yeah, and that and that's again another reason why I I miss the late great Ken Russell. Mm-hmm. Amen. Yeah. All right. While we have the time, gentlemen, I f- almost forgot, but I can't forget about this. It's time, uh, Ian and you, to go to our respective corners because <laughs> I want to talk about this and w- ask why it's on your list. It's not like last year with those fights, but here's the deal: it's a great film with style, great super film. cool, super cool action. I loved it. Why is this on your <laughs> list tonight? Here we go. I want to know the truth. Hotel Artemis. Because go. Uh, I mean, it's it's a sloppily constructed, poorly written movie. Eh. It doesn't eh. it doesn't have it doesn't have. I mean, some of the style seems okay. Yeah, but I mean, was it distinctive? Not really. What I mean, the characters seem like they were. You know, like Jodie Foster's character was given motivation that felt very trite to me. Um, but she was given motivation, and all the other characters are acting in a way that they 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 they're written in a way that they're supposed. You know, they. Their their motivation seems contrived. Okay, you know, cool. The relationship seems contrived, and also at the end, like what the he- what the heck was Zachary Quinto suddenly being in the bottom of the hotel? Like what real like what real was missing from that movie? I was just about to say yes. You know? After rewatching it, uh, that third act is weak, and he does pop like what that bad editing there, bad editing his first time film. Uh, sure, yeah, I can give and, you that. And then and then it's like you know I mean all this all this stuff is you know references to uh, the. Um, you know, there being a wall on the border, you know, can you get me over the wall? The and, wall and, and the water, stuff. which we're going, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you know, I'm not a smart guy, but w- there's going to be, f- there's going to be wars over water in the next 20, 30 years, whatever. So this is a uh, like, water world. Exactly. Now that <laughs> is a movie that had the chutzpah to be terrible. Water world? Uh, it's Mad, Mad Max on the water. Yeah, no, it was and, all right. and it's, no, but it's, I mean, it's, it's relatively well made compared to Hotel Artemis. <laughs> Wow. See, again, you have the low-hanging fruit thing, which is fine. But you, I would could say, like, you can't say this is worse than like your Fifty Shades Freed or whatever. You well, know? well, I mean, it depends on how how we're grading this. You know, Fifty Shades Fifty Shades Freed was a competently made mediocre film, right? It wasn't missing any reels. Like, I understood the characters' motivations. Like, I thought they were <laughs> asinine, <laughs> but but I understood their motivations. They seemed they seemed it seemed. Um, r- Comparatively logically constructed, okay. if that makes sense. Uh, Hotel Artemis, uh, 
I loved it. I loved I mean, the cool but, style. I mean, can you tell me what the geography of the hotel was? One, not that that's essential, but like compared to Bad Times at El Royale, where you get a real sense of the, uh, the oh geog- yeah, the now geog- that is a better the, film. The, the I can, geog- I can agree with that. You're working yeah. with, yeah. Whereas in Hotel Artemis, like I, it all seems like it's on kind of one. It was floor, in a tall. It was a tall one, skyscraper. One I mean, floor, they, but it's like half a floor. But then like they're going underneath to a front door. But I thought they were already at the front door. They it wasn't not, half the city. They did not. The they did not. Con- they did not give you any sense of what the space was. Now. Not every film, you know, like not every like really really good film does that. But when you add that to like the missing reel, where Zachary no, Quinto, they half where Zachary Quinto is suddenly in a place he isn't. How Dave, Dave Bautista suddenly like you know he's doing a hail mary. He was great in it. Oh, you know, he, he was the only good part of the movie. <laughs> Jodie Foster was you know? awesome. And then and then the female assassin, how she's gonna she's gonna stay behind because she's in love with this guy that they haven't they haven't really established any real love between them. You know. Yes, it was too short. I wanted more. I will give you that. It was too short. Too much cut out. That's studio interference. I hated that. Also, didn't. Uh, uh, need more, more of the Bloom, more Jeff Goldblum, less Zachary Quinto. So you, you know, some of that's right. But I, I say it's a, it was darn good. I'm not saying it's an original, completely original story. Well, I don't. But refreshing that. compared to the garbage we usually get uh, I mean, in how, the summers. But how so? How so? The style, the the substance. Again, again, I also love again the subtle message of it, done in a cool way. But what? What's not the, too preaching. But what's the subtle message? I, we just talked about it. Wait, wait, about the war wa- for about, water. About water? Yes. Okay. See there, so there's the message. There you go. That, the message is that we're in a subtle war for water. <laughs> we will be. We will be. Moving on. Uh, as, that's our fight for tonight. It's good. It's good. Go see it, people. Hotel Artemis. It, although not as good as the other hotel movie, Bad Night at the El Royale. Gentlemen, did you see any of those? No. no. I, I, have, I have one other. Please do, I, boy. To add to the list. Again, didn't see it for a reason. Uh, help me with the pronunciation. Papil. Papillion. Papillion. Uh, how do you say it? Uh, Papillon. P- Papillon. 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 He, knows, he knows things more than I do. Papillon. Um, I actually forgot that was remade. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. I loved the original 100 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> didn't want it. But now I just see uh, Remy Malek's in it. I didn't realize that. So now I'm going to want to see it to see him in something. But no desire to s- You know, the movie is okay, the original. But why did I want to see it? Yeah, I, I refuse to see it. Stop remaking yeah. these classics. Stop yeah. it. I was going to say, if you want to see R- Remy uh, Mayak in, in, in something, uh, w- watch... Um, <laughs> Bad Robot? Yeah, yeah, a Bad Robot. Yeah. Isn't it Mr. Robot? Christian's uh, Mr. Robot. Oh, Mr. Yeah, Robot. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bad Robot is the J.J. Abrams yeah, company, right. yeah. Uh, Mr. Robot is... It, it was a, a, a series on uh, uh, USA or something, but it's 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 really excellent about like hackers and... Uh, I've heard, uh, heard great things. Yeah. He's a good actor. He's really good. Christian Slater's in it, too. Wow! Yeah, Christian Slater. Hey, I I defend Blast from I, the past. I defend Christian Slater. He's all right. He's cool. I have no beef against Mr. Did, Slater. Did you ever see the 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 god awful beauty uh, that was Cuffs? No, you know I missed. It. I remember from it. The early nineties, yeah, high school days. No, but I've seen Gleam in the Cube. Oh, Gleam in oh. the Cube's amazing. <laughs> no, how about the no? Cube's amazing. Another movie I love. Critics hated. Very bad things. Very, very, very oh, dark yeah. comedy. Oh, yeah, I, I love remember that. that. I remember so that. Much Peter Berg. Yeah. yeah. Peter, Berg, Peter Berg directed it. His uh, his action double feature, Broken Arrow, with Hard Rain. And so much fun. <laughs> if you're a real fan of Slater, see him in, he's in The Wife. Oh, is he in the white? Oh, small, cool. Very small part, pivotal part, but he's actually pretty good in it. Oh, that's so, good. I mean, come on. We all, we all love Heathers. That's a classic, right? Oh, Heathers is great, yeah. That's a movie that won't be made now. You know, it, it, did, it got remade as a television show, and then and I think it immediately sank. Well, it's oh, also it's okay. it's going to be a Broadway musical if it's not of course already. It is. Of course I think it is. it's already a, a Broadway musical. I, I have deep feelings about that, <laughs> and they're not good. <laughs> Here's another one for you. Go ahead. Um, the Spy Who Dumped Me. It actually looked pretty fun. I just missed it. It looked kind of fun. The um, She's good, I think, in it, but I, I, I'll pass on it also. Well, it's the two, uh, one from SNL. Right. Uh, I'm going blank. Katie uh, McKinnon. Katie McKinnon. Katie McKinnon. Yeah. And the other from uh, the voice she's on, Family Guy. and It's Mia Kunis. Mia, Kunis. Mia Kunis, yes. She's good. It looked fun. So did you actually see it? I saw a couple of comparisons were enough. Okay. Hey, fair enough. Fair enough. Um... Do we have time Go ahead, to Ian, out? please. Do we have time to throw out more? Yeah. Please do. So, I don't really have anything else. Okay, well, I was thinking, it's a movie that's made a lot of the critics' uh, top ten um, list for the year. Um, and it's uh, You Were Never Really Here by Lynn Ramsey. I think I think 
Kermode put it on his best of. Mm-hmm. Guillermo del Toro put it on his best of. A lot of and critics loved it. Yeah, a lot of cri- critics loved it. And uh, it's on my worst of because I watched it and and um, was genuinely baffled. Um, the pacing of the movie was oh, painful. <laughs> painful. And the director, I see the director was trying to do something new and, and interesting. And I think it, it was meant to... <laughs> It, it, it was meant to um, to further what she was trying what she was trying to I guess say with the film or trying to present with the film, um, but every time we got to in the in the film we got to what would would have been a cathartic um, maybe action scene or scene of violence she cuts away, and so the whole scene plays out off screen and and I and I'm not saying the movie is bad or poorly made it's certainly not poorly made because Lynn, Lynn Ramsey is a very good director but I think it was all very um, uh, poorly executed. For my taste. Right on. For my taste. So who huge. Was, who dis- was in it? Joaquin Phoenix. Okay. Huge okay. disappointment like for you. It would yeah. interesting. Joaquin Phoenix is very good. Well, I mean, I think I think it's a question of taste, you know, because uh, the movie is not is not poorly made at all. Uh, it, just for me, it it's it did not strike me. So it was just uh, a huge disappointment for you. Well, not just a huge disappointment. I I think mm-hmm. it's a it's one of those cases where uh, someone's going the artsy route and they fail. There you go. You know. There you go. Uh, I'm going to wrap it up. That talks about uh, that links me to one of my uh, final topics. But before I wrap that up, anyone else wants to th- shout out one? Blaine, you got one? I think he covered them all. All right. We'll wrap it up with this. This category is <laughs> You Broke My Heart, Fredo. You Broke My Heart. These are the biggest disappointments of 2018. We mentioned The Predator. Yes, huge disappointment. Um, another one, this comedy I thought would work, Happy Time Murders by Brian Henson. And Henson Alternative, going to be their first rated R comedy. They won't be making those anymore. Um, when I heard the premise from years ago, I thought, oh my gosh, yeah, like a hardcore uh, puppets of Who Framed Roger Rabbit with puppets. I'm like, oh yeah, this should work, you know, in Henson Studios, yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, I think it was a, it was a short film written by a, a fifth grader. Uh, maybe it would have worked if it came out before Team America and uh, Avenue Q, but uh, again, like you said, all the trailer, all the laughs in the trailer, horrible, boring. And the bottom line, like you say, with Holmes and Watson, if a movie's not funny, it's just not funny. And it's like 85 minutes, but it felt like five hours. Horrible. Thank goodness I saw it on mm-hmm. discount night. That's Happy Time Murders. Yeah, I'm glad that I, I had to, to wash my hair when he asked me to go <laughs> see that one. You did the right thing, buddy. Thoughts on that, guys? I know you weren't, I'm guessing you weren't excited to see it. The only. The only uh, R-rated puppet film that um, <laughs> exists for me is Peter Jackson's Meet the Feebles. <laughs> That's a great movie. Which is one of the most disgusting movies you'll ever watch. But one of the only movies that ever that ever uh, really made me nauseous. <laughs> oh, Dead Alive. Uh, Dead Alive made me nauseous. Dead Alive didn't make me as nauseous as, as uh, Meet the Feebles. Meet the Feebles is like puppets doing things that humans really shouldn't do, you know? It's like, you know, it's pretty... But but at the same time, it's so brilliantly made. It, it And it has the... It has this sort of uh, uh, the um, um, uh, filmmaking flair of the Lord of the Rings. It's just, you know, it's uh, puppets. Puppets doing adult puppet stuff. There you yeah, go. Yeah. Blaine's a good thing. You saw the other bad Melissa McCarthy movie. I saw Happy Time Murder, so we'll, we have to confess our sins. Uh, number two, and I know I annoyed Ian Patrick Mendez about this because I was super excited. You know where I'm going. You know where I'm going. I think I do. Um, I was super excited. The trailers had me from the get-go. Oh, my gosh, what a beautiful story. I can't wait to see what they do. Welcome to Marwin by Robert Zemeckis. That's funny. I wanted to see that, too. My first walkout since 2013. You knew what everything was going to happen. They kept going back and forth between reality and his world that he creates with this computer animation or motion capture. And it's the same thing over again. All the women are Barbie dolls and dressed up, and they, they shoot all the Nazi bad guys over and over again, and it's, you know, rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat. It, uh, yeah. They always save them, and it was like watching the same Tom and Jerry thing over and over, and you knew exactly what was going to happen. In the beginning of the third act, he'd get his spirit and get the strength to go to court and take these people down, and it's like, you know what, I, I'm, I, this is so disappointing and so boring. I'm out. I'm out of here. I actually walked. Uh, it was so, it hard, broke my heart. Broke my heart. Thoughts on that, guys, and all the others of Mecca's uh, motion capture? What do you think? Um, I have nothing against motion capture. You know, it can be done really well, like Gollum and uh, Lord of the Rings. Sure, um, of course. You know, but, um, you know, one part of it, I was thinking, you know, uh, how many movies this year had Nazis as bad guys? <laughs> 
I think we've hit peak Nazi here. I think we. We're at peak, I think we're. Peak o- Nazi. I think we're oversaturated. No, I think we could kill some more Nazis. It'd be all right. Well, or at least punch them. Well, here's the thing. Slap them None of us fish. here like Nazis. Okay, there are very, 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 very few people like Nazis. Right? We can all agree on that. Let's get some new villains next year. <laughs> okay. Well, I saw it after watching this uh, very disappointing film. I watched the document, a trailer for the documentary it's based on. I believe it was called uh, Marwin Co. Uh, documentary true story yeah, yeah, which actually looks powerful more than the movie was and I will say this Steve Carell amazing I love his dramatic work he's great if it was just him like in a one man show with his models talking to them and doing that would have been great but every time they went back into uh, forgive me I've drank the Kool-Aid so I have to say this every time they go back into the uncanny valley which is the the term for that I guess uh, it's just like you just don't care because it's the same thing over and over again yeah, I I had no interest in seeing it, to tell you the truth. Well, that is the worst of 2018. Uh, thank you, gentlemen. But before we, uh, before I uh, play us off with some more Blind Boy Fuller, you want to throw out some more titles, anyone? Uh, any s- any any movies? Solo, a Star Wars. Solo. Oh, yes, quickly, I disagree. Quickly. I yeah. loved Solo. I thought it was a lot of fun. A nice, uh, uh, lose your, yourself in a, a, a nice like action movie. Film. Well, here's the thing. Okay? Yeah. When I when <laughs> I first saw it, I saw it in the theater. I had fun with it, and that's true. And I, you know, Ron Howard is a good craftsman. And then, you know, and really, I think it was because the the hot garbage that was the Last Jedi like really soured me. And then Solo was like, oh, breath of fresh air. It's like actually something fun going on. Um, yeah, on the air, you said it was good. Yeah, Solo, yeah, 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 yeah. And then and then I went back and watched it a second time. And I'm like, oh, this is so, <laughs> this is so by the numbers mediocre corporate. You know. Exactly. Here's how yes. we got a ship. Here's how we met Chewie. Yeah. And blah, blah, blah. You know, I talked everyone's ear off about Solo all year, so I'll stay out of that one. Uh, knock on wood. Knock no, on wood. and it's the same thing. When I first saw The Force Awakens, I think like a lot of people, I walked out of the theater, and I'm like, ah, that was fun. You know, and then watched it again, and, and, and the hollowness of it became uh, much more apparent. Before we go, I want you to plug your movie again, Ian Patrick Mendez. Congratulations oh, on you, that. Thank you, brother. I can't yeah. wait to see it. Tell us about that again, please. All right. It is a horror film. I can't release uh, any of the details um, about the story, unfortunately. Uh, but it's called The Good Things Devils Do, and it is going to be a fantastic horror film. Uh, it will be released uh, sometime later this year. Well, I'm proud of you. I can't wait to see it. Thank you so much for being on the show. Jason, you know, final Travis, thoughts? Some of us might have some other things going on. Oh, please on. do. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> uh, if we have time... Uh, I'm going to be in a, in a murder mystery. Ooh. It's, it's 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 called um, Melody for Murder. It's going to be out at um, uh, it's going to be out at the uh, the social on on Tom Road on Valentine's Day. <laughs> Ooh, the game is so afoot. If you're looking for, for something to do on Valentine's Day, come out. And, I can't wait and and see uh, a murder mystery. Blaine, February and ninth at Attic Salt Theater. We're doing a Happy Together review part two. Um, this will be a lot of fun. Carol Dermott, a lot of other good local people in it. Outstanding. At me, I don't want, I'm sorry to finish on this. I'll just be writing more bad jokes for next week's <laughs> show. Thank you all so much for both of these great shows. I, I'm honored to have you here. Thank you all so much. Uh, yes, we're going to close out here with more from Blind Boy Fuller. Thank you all so much. Be safe on this cold night.